Gotta keep an eye out for your silly races. And now they use it to describe anything they didn't buy. Remember when can be no put it in the side, guys? It was all about the people recognizing bigotry, the power of community, not fighting for your clickbait. <laughs> You gotta answer this, you gotta. How do you think Leslie Headland got the green light for the acolyte? Oh, you didn't... gotta give him that hook too and spit on that thing, you get me? <laughs> Not a day goes by that the acolyte isn't spawning new controversies and unforced errors. Just this weekend, a man, Blah Stenberg, released a low quality diss track to fire back at all the haters. I guess my female Rick James jabs are getting to her. Let's just do it, let's meet this thing head on. And you were, you were in it to win it. But exactly why is Stenberg firing back? Is the Acolyte really all that bad? Or is it just being supported by the normie apologists at this point? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Star Wars. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow, and it's totally free. By now, pretty much everyone knows that the Acolyte sucks. It's common knowledge. Even my one semi-normie apologist friend Steve from the comments section told me how much he thought it sucked. But it's not getting through into Leslie Max Headroom, Headland's thick skull, is it? It's not a matter of racism and bigotry, it's a matter of bad writing. I mean, how many times do I have to say it? These people seem to actually believe their own narrative. Their twisted progressive ideology has completely blinded them to reality and it's not a good way to run a business. Disney seems to be yet another American icon on the road to destruction. Just like Woolworths, Caldor, and Toys R Us, Disney executives will cluelessly look back and wonder what happened. A man, blah, Stenberg's vomit-inducing music video has been making waves across the interwebs and well, I can't say she's doing herself any favors. The video further exemplifies the bubble that Hollywood is living in. I should know because I live in one of these bubbles. People in New York City are happy in their blissful ignorance. I mean, just the other day, some old dude in the gym brought up a conspiracy theory that Trump's campaign manager was involved in some Sound of Freedom type stuff. News to me, when I googled it, I couldn't find a thing. But that's how these people live. Content swallowing the trash that mainstream media outlets like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News feeds them. They will swallow everything that the mainstream media gives them without question. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Many claim that the criticism of the show is reductive, but the show's criticism isn't reductive. It's simply a realistic opinion of ordinary, everyday people. The fact is that most people are not LGBTQIA+. It reflects a general belief that popular sagas which were never about LGBTQ lifestyles and people have been twisted to fit a narrative that quite frankly isn't all that appealing or interesting to most normal people. The sole focus on identity politics and progressive agendas in lieu of good writing, good stories, and good character development is what ruins these franchises. And I think that normie audiences are starting to wake up to it. I mean, Take a show like New Amsterdam. I don't usually like watching medical dramas, but this one had an interesting premise, how to fix the US healthcare system. A lofty goal by any stretch, but by the third season, the show became completely unwatchable. Take a look at this scene, for example. He's internalizing it. Name what? Racism. I think your son's tumor was caused by racism. I mean, I didn't need to go to Harvard Medical School to know that this is complete bullshit, but I use this as an example to show you how modern Hollywood writers have infused this twisted progressive agenda into their shows, and the degree to which they infuse this shit into your entertainment is staggering. While the New Amsterdam example is seriously egregious, you can't tell me you don't see Alphabet Soup Mafia agenda in this scene. To be clear, Amanda Stenberg hasn't accomplished anything noteworthy and is taking pride for being given a chance to create a TV series 
that is an apparent failure. She is probably intelligent and probably has some creative ability, but she appears to be tone deaf and non-responsive to her audience. That usually explains why some creators fail where others succeed. But that goes back to what I was saying about these people living in their own bubbles and not knowing what the world is really like. Disney seems to never learn. Their market for half a century was family-friendly entertainment. It was intentionally created to be non-controversial and benign. You reach the most amount of people by not siloing your content to a specific market. Their current push is to appeal to a certain progressive market and that is going to severely limit consumption, especially when their past customer base was traditional nuclear families. It's basic finance 101. All political and social agendas aside, it's a bad business model. I like the first Star Wars movies. After that, it doesn't appeal to me anymore. People can live their lives however they want, but that doesn't mean everyone will watch characters and stories they don't relate to. Disney may survive in the next decade, but I doubt they will ever see the same mass consumption they once had. I wouldn't buy stock in them, that's for sure. Another one of my YouTuber friends put it this way. I used to be like one of these people. I used to be woke. I was constantly getting triggered. I protested everything that offended me and demanded it all be canceled. Finally, I grew out of it and went to preschool. It would appear that a man, blah, Stenberg, hasn't made it to preschool yet though. Disney has chosen their path and through it all, they have been unrelenting. Their path to make content for the minority, not the majority, has cost them dearly financially, which begs the question as to who is running Disney now and why they have strayed so far from their founders' visions. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you find Stenberg's music video just as cringe as I did? And where does the disaster go next? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.